Darklings. So today I am talking about creepy carnivals and circuses and their presence in horror. So circus, circuses and carnivals have had a sort of magical mystique to them of the forbidden and the strange, uh, while also having kind of a not so great history, but they have been present in horror for a very long time. In this case, I'm talking about 20th and 21st century. I don't quite have the details and uh, the strength of background to go pre-20th century, so I won't even bother. But going back to the beginning of horror films and one of the most need-to-watch films ever, well, if you like films, this is just a good film to watch, but pretty much the beginning of proper horror began with The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, which does feature very heavily a sideshow, and uh, uh, Dr. Caligari's Cabinet, which features his somnambulist assistant, Cesar. So this is already, this is a hundred years old, and it has influenced how film looked ever since, but it does have this very central creepy character, Conrad Veet, who was also, um, the Man Who Laughs, he was, was Gwynplaine in The Man Who Laughs, which again features a sideshow-esque character um, who I have tattooed on me. But all the way back at the beginning of horror in the silent era, and you have this, you have Lon Chaney in The Unknown and Laugh Clown Laugh and stuff like that, which I haven't seen. Uh, and then a little bit more commonplace, and I highly recommend to most people for using actual circus freaks of the era, is Freaks from Todd Browning from 1932. It was a very controversial film, it still is in a lot of ways, but Todd Browning thought it was incredibly important to tell this story because he ran away and joined the circus as a teenager. He was a carnival barker and he was with a traveling circus in his youth before he became a director and involved with film. And he was immersed in this world with these type of people and they were family to him and so it was important for him to showcase that. Uh, even though a lot of people took great offense and were very horrified by these less than normal people uh, and it was really bothersome for them. Um, this list is not in any particular order but another one Circus of Horrors from 1960 which I haven't seen so I can't verify how good it is. Another kind of uh, campy cult film would be The Vampire Circus from 1970. Uh, it's very peculiar. Hammer has a lot of mixed bags but this is definitely kind of a strange one. Um, I have the UK version of the release but this does feature a traveling circus that happens to have vampires in it. It's a little ridiculous. Another great one that is not explicitly about a circus, but definitely features circus elements is um, Horowski's Santa Sangre from 1989, which I don't have my own copy of. There's also uh, Alex de Iglesias. I, I probably got that wrong. The Last Circus from 2010, which is Spanish which is not precisely a horror film, but more of a very eclectic drama horror film. Uh, that's of interest. There's Circus of the Dead from 2014 that I haven't seen. There is The Devil's Carnival and Alleluia, which I left in the little bag. Um, this definitely features very, very heavily on playing off of this creepy circus theme and the kind of horrors and unknown that are present within a traveling band of misfits. So of course you got that, and definitely playing off of that soundtrack very much. Um, I went to the original showings of, of both of the films in uh, Atlanta and Salt Lake. So the music styling in each film is quite different, but this one definitely kind of harkens back to classic carnival barking themes. Uh, another one, which a lot of people hate this, I never read the book series, so it's a little bit easier for me to like the bad film version, which would be The Vampire's Assistant from Cirque du Freak, which again, traveling vampire freak show. Well, it's not just vampires, it's also other kinds of monsters and weird creatures. But it kind of goes into the more supernatural idea of them. Uh, another one, if you want something a little bit more on the campy corny side, would be Killer Clowns from Outer Space, which, I mean, they're aliens that set up a carnival on the outskirts of town and start eating people through, you know, cotton candy cocoons. This is a really wild ride, and if you haven't seen it, you should. Uh, some of these have more generic titles, like Circus of Fear from 1966, which aside from having Christopher Lee in it, I know nothing about. Or you have kind of a weird one in Funhouse when you start getting like this really weird, creepy uh, Toby Hooper vehicle that doesn't make any sense. 
Uh, you also get a little bit of a footnote of clowns and amusement parks and their weird mystique at, towards the end of Zombieland. Uh, and then probably one of the, the best examples of this that really captures uh, the childhood fascination with freak shows very, very much would be Something Wicked This Way Comes. Uh, the 1983 film isn't perfect, but it's certainly uh, a good watch. It has it has its merits. Uh, I still I still believe that the original, that the novel is better. I definitely uh, prefer Ray Bradbury's story um, over the film, but it really does capture that sense of, of change and inevitability of, of youth and the potential and fascination with a traveling circus. Seeing it come into town and all the tents be set up and everything and how there's a particular type of magic attached to that type of of thing. Uh, another one which is a little bit more on the eclectic side and, and doesn't fit in the list perfectly would be Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, which is set up underneath an abandoned amusement park and it kind of fits in with that. Uh, Carnival of Souls, which was actually filmed about 15 minutes from where I live, if that, which features this weird hellish nights, like nightmarish scape of, a, of the Great Saltaire. That version of the Saltaire hasn't existed in a long time because that building is really good at burning down. But, I mean, you also have 1973's Carnival of Blood, which I still could not tell you what that's about because I watched it and forgot everything that happened because it's not very good. Um, another one that I haven't seen is Escape from Tomorrow from 2013 uh, or in Hellfest from 2018. And... The only Rob Zombie film I didn't like because it was not very interesting, which would be 31 from 2016. And another one that fits a little more loosely in this, but still has uh, the wraparound story kind of fit with this weird sideshow aesthetic and, and interest would be Theater Bazaar from, I think, 2007. But that all kind of encapsulate this particular mystique of the weird. And I do mean that with a capital W. Um, obviously you cannot ignore American Horror Story Freak Show when you're talking about that. That's not one of my favorite seasons of the show, although it does still have some interesting points to it. But this weird exclusion of society, so you have to make your own family of weirdos to, in order to have your own support system because the larger society will not support the different because people have a tendency to rebel against things they don't understand, including people that look different. So that's kind of interesting too. Um, as far as books go, I did bring a couple over to show you. The only Richard Lehman book, who is a uh, splatterpunk writer um, who, who died shortly after this came out, is The Traveling Vampire Show, which is a really wild book. But uh, it definitely kind of draws upon the the suspicions that arise in small towns when the circus comes through. Transient types make those that have permanent homesteads very nervous. And another one I haven't had the chance to read, but do I have had this collection sitting on my shelf for entirely too long, which is Carney Punk, which is a bunch of short stories. And I already mentioned Something Wicked This Way Comes, which is one of my favorite examples of it. But, I mean, as far as music goes, I also have uh, the Red Paintings, which even though there's nothing specifically circusy about it, their actual shows kind of have this sideshow type of aesthetic to them. Um, Emily Autumn around 2010 kind of goes in the same thing as well. And while I wouldn't count the whole album, there's definitely certain songs off of here like Straight Rager Cabaret, uh, Cat House Tragedy, and When the Circus Came to Town on Voltaire's uh, Riding a Black Unicorn. The, when the circus came to town reminds me very heavily of something wicked this way comes. So I figured I would showcase it for a second. But it's kind of interesting to think of, of carnivals and circuses as this weird fantasy element. And it, pro it crops up in horror a lot from having weird uh, clown characters like in terrifier and it and clown and several others because clowns are fit in with the circus and how we kind of distrust them because we can't figure out what they are there's that and and all this and it's also just people who are considered quote unquote un, uh, normal being afraid of anything that is different than them 
And some of these are less horrific and more beautiful, like the Night Circus, which I forgot to bring my copy over to show you. But the unknown has a very interesting effect on people, even when it's something that is still typically human. And then you have cases like the Cirque du Freak one where they're not. Anyway, that got a little rambly. Hopefully you understood where I was going with that. If you like this type of thing, if you have more movies to add to this list, feel free to comment them. Till next time, Darklings.